Hi, and welcome to the channel. My name is Tony, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Unify Switch, the 8POE Lite. In the interest of full disclosure, I want to thank Ubiquity for sending me this item for my review. However, I am not being paid for this content, nor is Ubiquity editing or approving the content before it's published. All of the opinions and views you hear are my own. That being said, let's head over to the computer and get started with today's video. So we're looking at the new Unify Switch Lite 8 PoE, model usw light 8 poe this switch is currently retailing on Ubiquity's website for $109, which, by the way, is the same price as the older US-8-60 watt switch. So just as a side note, I've installed many of the older US-8-60 watt switches in residential environments with absolutely zero concerns or issues. I'm hoping that this new switch has a similar track record. So inside the box, you get the switch itself, a 60 watt power adapter, and as an Apple user, that looks very similar to the MacBook Pro or MacBook power adapters that Apple ships with their products. You get a flexible mounting bracket, which we'll take a look at in a second, the installation hardware, and a quick start guide and instructional book. Taking a closer look at the unit itself, on the top you have the Ubiquiti logo, on the front, you have the 8 gigabit Ethernet ports. Unlike the older switch where ports 6 through 8 were the PoE ports, the PoE is supplied on this new version on ports 1 through 4. The power port for the 60 watt power adapter is located on the rear of the switch. And on the bottom of the switch, you have rubber non-slip feet for mounting on a desktop. In the center here, you have a reset button for setting the unit back to factory default. This slot here is for the mounting bracket, and I'll show you there's one on the other side if I turn the unit around. The same slot appears on the other side, and that gives you flexible mounting options for this unit if you want to place it on a wall. So for example, take the mounting bracket, just put it into place like that, and just snap it in. Now I'm not going to snap it in right now because once it's in place, it's pretty difficult to get out. However, depending on where you place it, so if I snap it in like this, facing the ports, you can mount it on a wall where the ethernet ports are facing upwards. So if you picture this being the wall here, and the unit was down like this on the wall, the ethernet ports would be up facing the ceiling. In the same respect, if you snap the bracket into the other slot on the other side, and again, imagine this was the wall, then you have your ethernet ports facing downward. You can also have it so that you have your ethernet ports facing sideways on either side, again, depending on which mounting bracket slot you use. So you get various flexible mounting options with this unit. The new switch is a layer two fully managed switch with eight gigabit ethernet ports. Four of the ports offer auto sensing 802.3 AT PoE plus power for Unify access points and other PoE devices. The Unify Switch Lite 8 PoE can be managed by the Unify controller. Just note, it has to be version 5.13.10 or later. The switch has a sleek new design, weighing in at just under a pound at 15.87 ounces. The maximum power consumption is 8 watts. Each of the PoE ports have a max power of 30 watts. Keep in mind, however, the power adapter is a 60 watt adapter, so maxing out all four ports is not recommended. All this said, let's get on with the setup and adoption in the Unify controller. I'm signed into my Unify controller, and this controller is hosted out on DigitalOcean. I have my Unify 16 port PoE 150 watt switch, my Unify 8 port PoE switch 150 watts, and then I have my three access points. I do have the new switch plugged in. It's powered up, and as you can see in this photo, it's got the white light and it's ready for adoption. The blue cable is connecting it over into the existing Unify 8 port 150 watt switch. And just real quick, take a look at this photo. 
under ports one through four, you can see a little lightning bolt icon. That icon designates these ports as your PoE ports. Now, since it's not showing up in the controller automatically, we have to go out and discover it. Now on a local controller or local hosted controller, it will show up in auto discover. And I've also heard that on some of the hosted controllers, it will show up. However, on mine, you can see here, it's not. So I have to go out and find this new switch. So I'm gonna click on another tab and I'm just gonna type in Chrome apps because I like to use the UBNT discovery tool. So I'm gonna click on that. And you can see here it found my home edge router, but we're gonna click on Unify Family to see if we can locate the new switch. And there it is, USLALP. Here's the IP address, and here's the MAC address, the firmware version, and the status is pending. Now I can click on the action button here, and I could issue the inform command right from here from the in user interface. However, it can also be done through the command line I'll show you how to get into that. However, then I'll come back and do it all through the user interface. So I'm gonna just bring up my terminal app. And if you're on a PC, you could use PuTTY. So all you have to do is sign in using the default credentials. So we're gonna say SSH, UBNT at the IP address. and it should ask for the password. Now, the first time you do this, it's gonna ask you to add the fingerprint to the local file, but for right now, I've already done that, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the default password of UBNT. And here you can see we're logged, now, we're logged into the switch now. So, if you want some help, if you're not sure on the commands, all you have to do is type help, and it gives you the available commands you can run. So you can see here, we could say set inform and then put our information in for our inform URL. And if we do that, the device should show up in the Unify controller. However, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna click on action in the discovery tool. And I'm gonna type in my inform URL and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say execute. And hopefully we should see the switch show up and there it is. And it's see here, it says pending adoption. So now that it did show up, I can close this and I can close the discovery tool and I can come up to the switch, come over to the right and say adopt. And here you see the status says adopting. Sometimes if it takes a long time, oh, there we go, it's provisioning now. I was gonna say, sometimes you have to issue the inform command a second time, but I did not have to in this case. And there you go, guys. Here's the Unify Switch Lite 8 PoE, and it's got a status of connected. So let's click on the switch and go through some of the settings. Let me just pop this out for you so you can see this better. Under the overview, you can see we have the MAC address, the switch name, the firmware version, which it's currently running out of the box, the IP address. Under uplink, here you can see it's uplinked to my Unify 8 port PoE switch, 150 watt on port six. We don't have any downlinks at this time, nor do we have any clients. Under ports, you can see here are the eight ports. The first four are your PoE ports. Let's click on one of the ports. I just wanna show you something, that it functions just like all of the other Unify switches. I can give it a name under switch port profile. I can select my different networks and it does see my VLANs here, which is really cool. Under settings, I'm gonna give it a name. I'll just call it Lab Switch Lite. and say save. And under network, you can see it's getting an address via DHCP, but I'm going to change that to a static IP just for the sake of consistency. You can see here, my one switch is 25.2. My other switch is 25.3. So we'll make the switch light 25.4.
You can see now the switch is provisioning. And you can see here the switch has an IP address now of 25.4. And finally, under the Tools menu, you can go into the switch command line just by opening up the debug terminal. So, so far, overall, I'm really liking this new switch. I like the new design. It's sleek, it's clean, it's white. It'll fit nicely in any home environment, maybe on a desk or on a wall unit shelf. I think it would be a great addition to an existing Unify network if you need additional ports, say maybe more than five, but less than 16. I also think it would work well in a small retail space, maybe a hair salon or a clothing boutique, something of that sort. If you found any value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share the video. And as always, guys, I want to thank you again for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions, as always. Thanks for tuning in, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.